Joining me on the line, uh, as he does a lot of weeks, and this week it was more he yelled at me and asked me if we were going to talk about college football. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Schaefer from Local Fives on the line. What's up, buddy? Hey, B-Sox. Yeah, uh, I mean, I had to yell at you. I felt like it was a big week coming out of a big week for both Iowa State and Iowa. I was like, are we not talking college football? Because, hello, one, you enjoy my conversation. Two, I kind of enjoy your conversation. And three, there's a lot of football to talk about. What's really funny about it, we don't have to get into the details of why, but we'll just say you were in a mood on on Monday, and it was just the funniest thing because all of a sudden it was, are we talking college football this week? It's like, okay, man. Sorry, can- I came in a little hot and bothered, a little aggressive. You know, we all have those Monday blues, and some people take it out differently. And the Sox happened to call it that perfect time to get that it was, little bit of wrath. It, it was so funny, though. It was just so out of nowhere, and I'm like, yes, absolutely, let's do it. Uh, Jonathan Schaefer joining me on the line. Where do you want to start this week? Because the last time we talked was right before the Iowa State game. A lot's yeah, happened I mean, since then. <laughs> A lot's happened since then. Obviously, let's talk about, let's start with the Cyclones because expectations are not being met up there in Ames right now. And, um, you know, it's caused a little bit of panic amongst those Cyclone fans and for good reason. I mean, two and two is nowhere where anyone expected the Cyclones to be coming into week five already. You know, you look at this game and people were sitting there saying they could be through the first five weeks, five and oh, and possibly should be. Yeah. Um, they're anything but, and you know, the Iowa game, all right, excusable. I was a top five team right now, and we'll find out who they really are in a couple weeks. But, you know, the loss to Baylor, I think, has got to be unbelief because they win in two phases of that game, especially in the second half. But the third phase, special teams, once again, just totally puts them in the drain. And so I think there's a lot of frustration there. There's a lot of concern because this is the most talented team Iowa State's ever had, and they could finish with a worse record than any other, you know, than last year, the year before. It's interesting to me, and I want to get to the special teams thing because uh, I I listened to some stuff about that this week, and and it's interesting to me because I don't think it's a story many people know. And and correct me if I'm wrong because I, I haven't dove deep into a lot of Iowa State games, but from what I saw last year with a very similar roster this year, this team doesn't look the same as last year, right? Yeah, they're they're kind of missing that pep that you know they kind of or that chip that they had a year ago, and maybe that's because expectations were finally high enough where they were like, all right, we're getting the respect we we deserve. But then that's where the problem comes in is you don't put that chip and and uh oh, you're not you don't have an edge to your game. You know, you think you belong and. I think what we've learned with Iowa State is it doesn't matter if you think you belong or not. If you're not going to execute for 60 minutes of football, you're not going to win football games. What do you think, like, other than the special team segment, because it's easy to put all of the blame onto that, what what is going on? right now because I mean last year uh the team once they got like later into the season it was really clicking like things were lined up really well the stars you know the stars aligned this year it's it's not aligned yeah they haven't been playing with the joy I think that they had at times last year last year was such a bizarre year but you also got to remember they were playing in four game or three game pods you know they were playing three games on one week off three games on one week off and that kept them fresh right now I mean that would have been the off week last week. And so, you know, I think they're trying to navigate that. The other aspect of these Sox is they don't have a special teams coordinator and just running through their coaches. I don't even think they really have a special teams coach. And so what does, I mean, I mean, that's a little bit of a cause for concern when you've got these woes on special teams, the punting game is not where it should be. I mean, talk about just watching every other punter in the country that Iowa state plays be impeccably good and then on top of that you lose a guy like Kane Nuwangu who uh you know graduated after last year he was their star returner and and one of the best in the country and when you lose a piece like that, that those are big shoes to fill and they haven't done a good job of finding that so I mean I think that's where the special teams glitches are kind of at right now but you're right offensively defensively I think defensively this team has been fine the first half against Baylor they just didn't make their adjustment quite quick enough to keep yeah. them off the board but you also got to remember they were dealing with short fields, that kind of stuff. Because yeah. Their punting game was not where it needed to be. So they just don't have that spark. And I don't know if that's a Matt Campbell thing, if that's a players just maybe fatigued a little bit. Who knows? But, um, you know, a good chance to turn around against Kansas on Saturday. I want to get back to Matt Campbell here in a second. But uh, the special teams coach thing is interesting to me because I was listening to a couple of the uh, talk shows about, you know, the Cyclones this week. And there was uh, uh, there's this thing about uh, uh, they're one of like uh, six teams in the Big 12 that don't have special teams coordinators. <laughs> Interesting. Which is I crazy. Yeah, like Oklahoma doesn't have one, a couple other ones. But 
to me, it it's if that's been your glaring mistake for years. And let's face it, I mean, Iowa State, um, a lot of their a lot of times when the the game goes south is because of special teams, right? Yeah, I, th- I think that's yeah. I think that's fair to say for and and that's not just a Matt Campbell thing. I mean, you can track that back through Paul Rhodes, Dan McCarney, Jizek. Uh <laughs> You know, they <laughs> Don't dare say his name. I know, right? The, the angry mob is going to come. But I mean, if that's been your issue for years, why aren't you addressing it more than just, "Hey, we've got a couple coaches that are uh, you know, one one does kickoff, one does this. It, it seems like, okay, this should be a pretty important deal we should be doing. Yeah, it does. And and I'm not sure what the answer to that. I just think it's, it, you know, they've maybe been thinking they can mask it a little bit. But you look back to even last year and in their in their losses to Oklahoma State and Louisiana, special teams were the, the Achilles heel in both those games. I just, Same thing this year, you know. It, it's, it, it's just it's head-scratching. It can be a little frustrating. I'm sure it's frustrating for Matt Campbell because the last thing he wants to do is deal with fielding questions on this. And, you know, it's it shouldn't be that hard to execute or find a punter or a field goal kicker that can execute to yeah. the standards expected at Division One level. Because, every, I mean, everyone's going to have an, uh, an off game in special teams or yeah. an, an off play, you know. I mean, you look at... Uh, uh, you know, uh, Iowa, who's been so good on field goals, where <laughs> they had that one where they messed up the snap and it went, you know, completely sideways. <laughs> or, you know, it, it, I mean, you have that. Even really yeah. good special teams have issues at times. And when, But when it's your issue all the time, it, it it's like, I don't want to say you don't care, but it's like, are, do you? Yeah, you know, and then you look at a guy like Tory Taylor over in Iowa City who's just punting the heck out of the ball and has been, like, so much fun to watch. I think yeah. there's a great case to be made for a guy like that, you know, and um, you see the value in how I was able to switch fields and what that does for their defense. Cause let's be real. I was offense isn't great, but part of the reason I was defense has been so good is because, you know, they've been able to yeah. take advantage of teams backed up on their goal line. Oh, we'll get to Iowa's offense in a second. <laughs> uh, the other thing, Don't jump uh, the gun. absolutely. Jonathan Schaefer from Local Five joining me on the line. Uh, switch gears over to Iowa. Much different place than we thought they'd be uh, <laughs> two weeks ago. I, I mean, honestly, you know. Yeah. I, well, I mean, it, you look at their schedule. It, it, the Iowa State game was the one that was going to sit there and, and really decide. All right or tell us what team they had. And, and even then you're like, okay, maybe a little bit of a fluke, but then the way they beat up on Kent state pretty easily last week, wasn't great against Colorado state. You kind of expected a letdown ahead of a Maryland team this week. That's actually pretty good short week, that kind of stuff. So I'm not too worried about them coming out of that. Yeah. They'd only be Colorado state by 10, but I mean, the defense has been absolutely stellar special teams. We've been talking a lot about absolutely stellar and the offense is, Okay. I there. Are, I was talking to one of my buddies that when we all you know kind of watch the game. We used to watch them all the you know together, but now we just text yeah. during the game because he's a Duluth. But like, there's part every time I want to kind of give up on Petrus, he throws just a, one of just a perfect pass. You mean he goes and totally redeems himself? It, yeah, it really is that. Where because I said something, <laughs> and, and uh, my buddy he wrote me back. He's like, "You want to make fun of him a little bit more? Maybe we'll get going." <laughs> But it's like uh, it's like that touchdown pass he threw uh, against Iowa State, where it, like yeah. it couldn't have been any better, you know? Yeah, and it's that just Charlie Jones was insane. It fooled me. I thought he was going back corner with his where his body was positioned. He kind of threw it across his chest, but yeah, dropped it perfectly into Charlie Jones, and and he has those moments where it like glistens like well refined quarterback, and then you watch him throw a five yard out route into the turf, and it's like. <laughs> what the heck is this what what are you doing sir you know it's yeah like he has those head scratching moments but you know again i think that offensive line was pretty young coming into the year outside of tyler linderbaum they're they're maturing a little bit more he's got a great safety net and tyler goodson and even you know gavin williams and ivory kelly martin and he's got some wide receivers that can do some big things you know tyrone tracy's kind of been up and down a little bit, but he's got yeah. a lot of young wide receivers, and I think he's got plenty of room to improve, which is really good because I don't see him digressing. No, and it is better. Like he hasn't done stupid things, and and I think uh, right. somebody was talking about that where it's like as long as he doesn't turn over the ball, they're fine with him. You yeah, know? and that's what it boils down to for Iowa when you really think about it. Like if they take care of the ball and win in the tur- turnover margin, they're fine. Like yeah. honestly, they just need that guy that can handle the ball and, and where they have turned the ball over is actually in the run game with some with some you know fumbles here or there but 
you know, you look at Spencer Petrus' stats this year, they're not going to blow you out of the out of the water by any means. He's only got, I think, like one touchdown this year. Or no, sorry. He's got four touchdowns this year to one INT. And that yeah. interception came against Colorado State this last week. But what does concern me is you look at it like the average yardage of completion or whatever. It's like five yards, yeah. five yards, five yards, 9.7 last week against Colorado state, which tells me he's taking a few more shots, but where this team's going to live is that run game and, and the scheme that they've shown so many times week in and week out so far has been really fun to watch, you know, getting some creative motions and, and really putting Tyler Goodson in some space to, to make some defenders look really silly or just run past them. He, I think he's kind of taken a step back this year so far. Good the, thing, I, really? You think so? Well, I, I, I don't know what it is about Iowa running backs, but it always seems like they have a really good year, and then the, the year they're supposed to break out a little bit, it's like they take a step back. Um, I actually think the opposite with Tyler. This really? Um, I, I feel that way more so with Brees Hall. Okay. Um, yeah, I can see and, that. And just because of you know some of the circumstances. Now, Tyler Goodson's numbers haven't been huge, but you also got to look at, you know, all righty, 55 against Iowa State and 57 last week against Colorado State, not the best. But those are two defenses that were really loading up the box and saying, all right, Spencer Petras, go and beat us. Yeah. And Spencer Petras goes and beats them. But, you know, 153 <laughs> against Kent State and um, three three touchdowns. Indiana, he had almost 100 yards rushing. I think Tyler Goodson's really been solid, especially behind an offensive line, like I said, pretty young still, but, and- trying to find their, their motion and – yeah, I'm not saying that I want to get rid. I just don't think he's been as good as last year. Like, if you watch him, he does a lot of the like he hits the line and he stutter steps. Yeah, and he's I think been a little hesitant at times. Yeah, yeah. There, it's just been. It's just like run the f-ing ball, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. that's. I know and, that sounds really simple. And again, from the guy that's behind a microphone and 40 years past his prime. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, how many how many yards did you run for in college there, B Socks? Jonathan Schaefer from We Are Iowa. (laughs) Goal five joining me on the line. No, but I mean, it's just from the eye test and just what I've seen. Like, I see him, he gets up to the line and he, like, stutters and he's thinking about which way he wants to spin. And it's for sure. I get that. I get that. So, I don't know. I just, it's one of those things. It's like, there's just sometimes you're like, just run. Just run run as hard (laughs) as you can. So, and I'm sure they are. And and don't get me wrong. I sure, I'm. Listen, like I said, radio guy behind a microphone saying it. So take it, take it for what it's worth. But it you know, just, we can go play some pickup football and see how well you run it. Jesus, I'd have a heart attack just going out onto the field at this point. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. <laughs> As you look uh, ahead to this weekend, I mean, Iowa State's going to murder Kansas, right? Yeah, I'd hope so. I mean, a six o'clock game should be pretty full out there. I think they they uh, take it to them pretty well, but. Again, Kansas is a team that just, uh, you know, has a little bit of belief. But, yeah, it should be a 30-point game at least. Kind of get some things back on track. They get a bye week after that. And then we get to really talk about Iowa-Penn State, which could be a top-five matchup if both the Nittany Lions and Hawkeyes take care of it this week. Uh, Iowa this week against Maryland, what are you thinking? Uh, I think it's a dangerous game. I think Maryland's a really good team. Um, I think it's a close one. Weird things happen on Friday nights. I love that Maryland's doing a blackout, and Iowa said we're going to wear gold jersey, so it's a black and gold game. Are they um, really? <laughs> yeah, that's what I. At least I saw that tweet. I could be totally wrong on this, but pretty I thought sure it, that's what I saw on Twitter. So we'll see. I think Iowa wins it. I think Maryland. You know, you look at their schedule. Um, they they're a really good team. They don't give up a, a lot of yards to opponents. They put up a lot of points and put up a lot of yards themselves. But you also got to look at who they played. You know, Kent State, similar score to Iowa. But then they beat Illinois by three. Howard, who cares? And then they got West Virginia week one and beat them by six. And West Virginia has shown they're a really good team, but I don't think they were the team that they are now back in week one. So okay. I think this game sets up well for Iowa. I think Maryland gives up a lot on the ground. But I think Spencer Petras is going to be tested again. So it, it's, it is going to be one of those things where he just kind of barely gets by. And you're like, okay. Yay. Yeah, exactly. Give me hope. But hey, a win's a win's a win. So. I just want uh, Deuce to get in so we get to hear Real American at Kinnick Stadium just one time. <laughs> like they have oh to boy. do that right I'd, I'd hope so or I, i'd hope so but we'll, we never know <laughs> or do you or do you do later uh hogan and do like the nwo music i have no idea what you're talking about now you've lost me you you never watch pro wrestling I'm, I'm not a pro wrestling guy 
Oh my God! I have to. <laughs> I think I just bothered B Socks a little bit. He might need some time away from me. Well, usually people know at least kind of know what the NWO is. I know what NWO is. I just don't know anybody that wrestled in NWO anymore. Hulk Hogan. I had Hogan. like WCW. Well, yeah, but I had like WCW NWO on N64 when I was a kid. That's about the extent of my wrestling knowledge. But you don't remember the and NWO I, music? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Wow. I'd only ever use. Sting because I could start with a metal bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Josh Schaefer for We Are Iowa Local 5. Join me on the line to talk about college football. All right, man, I'll let you get going because I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm going to go play some N64 and refresh my memory on NWO, WCW.